again, the last thing we want to do uh, is look at the extended names. Again, it's so easy to say that, but it's so hard because, again, you see that runaway train, but you realize the runaway train started two weeks ago. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is doing well. Happy uh, Labor Day. Hope everybody is getting a good rest. We deserve it. Again, you, you will never find a more mentally uh, strenuous profession than this. I don't care if you're trading for 22 days, 22 weeks, or 22 years, uh, this is the all-in mental equity of any business on the planet. And it's so hard and so challenging because there's so many outside influences that dictate what we do. And we still have to be 100% focused on the task at hand. And oh, by the way, uh, capital, right? Money is at stake. So hopefully everybody's taking advantage of this uh, long three-day weekend. Uh, get some rest, recharge, reset the reset. Uh, and come back uh, focused on Tuesday. Unfortunately for myself, I had vacation plans that were derailed. Again, let this be my worst uh, problem in life. So I had to actually pivot to something else, pun intended, maybe not intended, but maybe intended. Uh, but overall, listen, let this be my worst problem in life. Uh, we're healthy, we're happy. The most important part is we are uh, alive. So let's talk about the market. Uh, market played out pretty much how I thought. If you've been watching uh, the video for the last week, uh, you kind of knew we, we were still in melt up mode. Okay. Uh, we we're obviously cautious, making sure that we weren't uh, looking at anything uh, overextended. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, you know, again, we are conscious of the idea that at any given point uh, on an aggressive tight channel market, uh, melt up, uh, they could pull the plug at any time. So we, we knew all this. So, you know, this week, we had a couple of aggressive days, okay? Uh, we had a couple of days, I just couldn't get anything going. It was just, you know, just one of those things, just couldn't get anything going. Um, I was concentrating on the wrong stocks. For example, like on a Wednesday update, I was concentrating on Tesla and I missed everything else. Um, and then Friday was literally the day, uh, the day before a long day weekend. So if you look at all the aggressive nature on Friday, it came after lunch basically when I, when I logged off. So this week played out exactly how we thought. The strong names continued to melt up. Uh, the indexes did absolutely nothing to, to give you any type of uh, certainty or uncertainty that next week is going to be any different uh, than the previous weeks. But the only thing that we do know is number one, all bad news is getting uh, bought, continues to get bought. Uh, again, we, we saw an unfortunate uh, a terrorist attack in Afghanistan, right, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we're still in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, the monthly payroll numbers came in uh, well short of expectations, okay, which could have easily derailed uh, any type of melt up. But when you look at the end of the week, the scoreboard, you'll see the Qs, uh, the NASDAQ 100 uh, up 1.6%, the, the Dow flat, you know, pretty much flat, S&P up a smidge. But the most important part is now we finally got Labor Day uh, out of the way and slowly but surely you're, you're going to start seeing uh, traders trickle in in the next uh, you know three four days or so uh, coming back from vacation my kids start school on I think Thursday right uh, on Thursday and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you know schools already started so you're we're finally getting to that getting back into that swing of things in life for the fourth quarter. Again, traditionally, uh, the fourth quarter has been really, really good uh, for equity price, prices, but does that matter, right? Does tr just tr tr tradition uh, make a difference? We've been melting up for a very, very long time. Anything could happen, and we're conscious of anything could happening. But for now, things are really good. The bulls are uh, clearly in charge. Again, bad news is being brushed off. You know, is that going to continue? Is that going to be the trend uh, going into the fourth quarter? We're hoping, right? I, again, nobody knows for sure. We're hoping. We're always uh, conscious of a, a very, very aggressive uh, rug pull. And, you know, when you are conscious of a very, very aggressive rug pull, you're going to trade a little bit more cautious. And I, I found myself 
this week, especially on a couple of days, right? Uh, Monday was very aggressive. That's when Tesla really broke out. And by the way, we're still waiting for that con uh, continuation. Uh, and Wednesday was good, but in the middle, right? In the middle, Friday was exaggerated towards the end of the day with mRNA. We talked about that on Friday, uh, on Thursday's video. But, but the point is be, because I'm so conscious and because it's happened to me so many times before, market melting up, melting up. And then you're like, yeah, nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna be wrong. And then you look, you turn around and everything gets de demolished. I was a little bit more conservative um, about letting plays play out, right? Letting, like letting ranges play out. And I took the more uh, I took the more cautious approach on the days that I couldn't get any going. And you know, I, I I made sales. I broke even a bunch of times. Had a little bit of you know had a, some some little bit of losses on certain trades. A little bit of wins on certain trades. My my bulk of my uh, week. I would say 90% of my week came Monday uh, and Wednesday. So I found myself being a little bit more cautious this week and a little bit later in the interval or a little bit later in the candle, I saw the stock work out and it was a little bit frustrating, but I also know uh, the worst case scenario is that if you're not conscious how stocks um, really obey levels and yet you really have to be conscious of levels, whether they're uh, on the daily chart or, or like I use the 60 minute charts or even if you're using the one minute chart, whatever, whatever your drug of choice is. But the point is you have to be conscious how a stock should be reacting on an interval. And if a stock stalls out, especially with, with you know, kind of deep in your mind saying to yourself, well, the market get pulled at any time, Prudence, right? Prudence is always benefit and you're going to find yourself in that type of scenario, finding yourself with a lot more break even scenarios than you would um, normally, especially with a very, very aggressive volume market. But I, I, I took the, you know, I took the prudent approach. I took the feasible approach of kind of collecting data and saying to myself, you know what, I, I would rather miss the run then overstay my welcome in something, have the futures pull, my stock gets pulled two, three dollars. That's the last thing we want to do. So it was, I took a little bit of a prudent approach. The only thing is I'm trying to always get better. I, again, I, I think when you're in this business for the first you know, two, three years, you're just trying to get your feet wet. You're trying to kind of figure out who you are and what type of trader you are, your, your risk tolerance, your, um, your account size obviously matters, the type of stocks you trade obviously matters. When you hit like year 22, and hopefully a lot of you guys will, but when you hit year 22, you're just trying to figure out better ways to kind of uh, to kind of skin a cat. I don't know if that's even even a very popular um, uh, terminology anymore. So I, I came to the conclusion. I was kind of thinking over over the weekend. Uh, you know, how do you attack? You know, how do how do how do I attack a slower day, right? And I came to the conclusion that. I think the days that are slower, you could obviously slower, see slower, that the days are just like by 1045, like the volume is dead. I think if the market continues to stroll up, I had this kind of like light bulb moment, instead of buying strength, because again, if you're buying strength in, in a market that has no life in it, there's not gonna be any liquidity anyway. Um, so I kind of thought about it over the weekend, and especially like a, a name like NVIDIA on Friday, it kept on stalling out, stalling out, stalling out, and it finally ran. But I looked at the intraday charts, right? And if I would have bought the pullback on NVIDIA instead of strength uh, the first time around, well, the stock eventually off that rising support kind of exploded. So we, we're trying to always get better, whether you're trying to just figure out the difference between uh, a bid and an ask, you know, year one, or the difference between a lethargic and aggressive market year five, or a market that has no liquidity versus a very, very uh, aggressive liquidity type of driven market. You know, you're always trying to omit worse. You know, you're trying to omit things that are going to harm you, or, or actually even even stop your progress uh, going forward. And I try, I'm always trying to do so. So the, the key is never stop learning, never stop learning, never put yourself in a situation that you're so complacent that you think you did something great the week before because the market's always changing. It's a very fluid situation. And if you stop learning, as the old cliche goes, you stop earning. So uh, going into this week, again, I mean, it's very, very tough to turn around and say, well, now Labor Day is done. The calendar has changed. Everybody's coming back. The market now is going to tank. It's very, very tough to say that. And again, as much as we see the the, the melt up in the market, there's really no reason, or at least the market's not giving us a technical reason uh, why we should be bearish. Yes, be be conscious, understanding of what might happen because of a rug pull, just because of gravity. Absolutely. But if you look at names, for example, that have done you know really, really well. I mean, they're they're really in striking distance 
of going up again and going, going higher. I mean, that Tesla's been trading very, very odd. Like it has one really, really big day and it'll go sideways for like a week or so. That's exactly what happened on Monday, right? Monday, it broke out above the 730 area. Uh, this is pretty much the bulk of my week. Um, had a really, really big move, uh, and then just went sideways for the next four days. Uh, a name like Amazon it had this really, really great move from the bottom of the channel, shaking off uh, earnings. And again, what's cool about Amazon right now, it reclaimed the 50-day moving average. They try to sell it off, and they reclaimed it back. So that's very, very strong. A name like Apple, still going sideways, but is again, attacking the top of the range here. Uh, Facebook has been incredibly strong. The name like Coin is obviously benefiting from the run of Bitcoin. You know, touch 50,000, Ethereum uh, touch 4,000. And this is like, you know, literally, this is, you know, we had a couple of pivots on uh, Coin throughout the week. And this is li literally one or two days away from attacking the upper Bollinger Band and really start clearing out uh, for a potential run into this 294 level. Even a name like MRNA, and this is, um, and this is something we've been, wa if you've been watching this broadcast, um, just for the last couple of weeks, this thing has been really holding this range for a very, very long time. And, you know, before Friday's session, we talked about the top of the range here, um, kind of in nausea. It kept on getting rejected. And the, the craziest part about mRNA is, if you watched uh, Wednesday's video, it, it gives you, up, up till Friday, it gave you like false senses, right? It gave you like false uh, green lights. Like the, it would have bad news. It would shake it off go right back, you know, right back to the range. And just when you thought it was about to trigger the range again, more bad news would come out. But Friday was different. Again, we'll, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. And it finally confirmed this whole range here, uh, looking really, really strong uh, for, for this week. So we're definitely set up. And obviously, you know, I'm waiting for Tesla for the second run up here. Uh, again, uh, all those call buyers on Monday, they, they were betting for the 750, 780, 790 calls, and, and they had every right technically to be betting on Tesla for that prices. They all got expired worthless because, well, they never, it never even came close to a day two run, which is, which is honestly very, very surprising, but it's still in this range here, and at any given point, Tesla could wake up again. Um, I think one of you know one of the biggest um, things we saw this week was kind of like <sighs> the stay-at-home stocks kind of just really fell out of favor, right? If you look at the names that really had big moves uh, and obviously took advantage of the whole COVID stay-at-home movement, names like Zoom, right? Names like Zoom got hit really aggressively into earnings. Uh, names like Chewy, which I love Chewy. We use them uh, every single month, right? They got sold as well. A name like Peloton, right? Uh, again, took advantage of the whole uh, stay-at-home movement it is getting sold. The one stock that held up really, really well and not only held up, but just, just is going absolutely nuts right now is Netflix. And if you guys remember, and I talked about this on um, Wednesday's video, if you guys remember when news broke out on, on Netflix, uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, that the office was leaving, the stock really got hit. And, you, you know, the run up here, nobody really knew. If you guys remember, Netflix started this whole run up here. And this is the first stock with all the technology names that had this really, really big run. And nobody figured out, and nobody tried to figure out, well, what's going on? Are they getting taken over? Like, what's the deal? And finally, like as the old cliche says, somebody always knows something. And uh, obviously, uh, getting the rights to Seinfeld was a big, big deal. Uh, we saw massive call buying uh, through this whole run here. Uh, Thursday and Friday, so the 600 calls uh, coming in on Netflix. And again, here's a perfect example that even though this is you know part of the whole stay-at-home movement, again, Netflix is not Zoom. Netflix is not uh, Peloton or Chewy. So big, big action. Uh, there as well. So going into this week, um, you know, again, it's very, very tough uh, not to be bullish. Uh, let me give you guys some names that I that I kind of like. You know, that look pretty good. Um, a name like NTLA, uh, not the thickest stock in the world, but has tendencies of going on big, big runs. Um, it's attempting to break this whole channel here, right? The top of this channel here was this 178, 180 level. If this thing starts putting in a new base off this 180 level, and listen, who knows? Maybe this thing starts testing this two, you know, 202 channel. It's very, very possible. The only reason why it stopped 
it hits linear regression lines. So again, not the easiest name to kind of day trade, but if you are uh, looking for a swing for this thing and this thing starts taking out the top of the channel, all you have to do is use the previous day's low as your max pain and you are navigating uh, the trade technically. So definitely keep an eye on something like that. Uh, Docu, okay, uh, one of the names that did not get hit with the stay at home movement had a monster, monster uh, session on Friday, right? If you look at a uh, docu, uh, it came out with earnings and you're saying to yourself, well, here we go again, all the stay at home stocks are getting hit. Big, big reversal. And now technically, right, you can see here, it's gotten rejected off twice off the same level here. If it starts reclaiming this level here, you know, again, you're gonna have the next leg up here. Again, the value in docu is obviously any dip uh, into rising 60 minute support. And if it starts attacking uh, this whole channel here, it confirms you could get a next push uh, into the 320s, into the 340s. So definitely keep an eye on Docu. Uh, a name that I'm not really familiar with, uh, but it looks pretty good here. Um, KNBE. If anybody knows anything about the stock, uh, you know, keep an eye on this thing. This thing put in a high above the 50 day moving average <clears throat> and then proceeded to sell off the next three weeks. Uh, this is the first close and the highest close in this whole formation. If this KNBE uh, starts getting above like this $28 level here, you could get a push to 30, 31. So uh, keep an eye on that as well. Uh, obviously, we're still watching Tesla for another run. I'm watching obviously Apple uh, for another run here as well. Uh, that's looking good as well. And even a name like Crowd, right? Even a name like Crowd uh, that had this really, really great run uh, came in, retested this rising uh, linear regression line slash 10-day moving average, reclaimed the five-day moving average. Hey, maybe this thing uh, sparks up again. So we, we definitely have a lot of good value. Again, the last thing we want to do uh, is look at the extended names. Again, it, it's so easy to say that, but it's so hard because, again, you see that runaway train, but you realize the runaway train started two weeks ago, right? It's not starting the day that you're looking at it. So the last thing you want to do is look at anything over overextended that's up five six seven eight days in a row because again if there is a pull and again nobody's saying it will but just again just to be conscious if there is a pull in the market the stocks that have those big runs they're the ones that get pulled first so let's talk about friday session again you, you, you didn't see you know you didn't see a lot um you didn't see a lot of um a lot of names uh trigger right you didn't see a lot of names trigger but the ones that did uh whether they got there slow or they got there fast the point is it kind of mirrored the action of the markets. Not a lot of people representing strength and weakness on Monday. Again, you had your uh, reaction, the initial reaction to the uh, non-farm, uh, to the jobs numbers that really weren't good. So again, the names that triggered did fine and the names that kind of didn't, well, they didn't do anything, just kind of like every other day. But the difference was the volume shrank very, very quickly on Friday. Um, I think, I think, it really died out. It felt like it died out around like 10, 15 in the morning. And I was like, I took a couple of trades. I was basically break even. I was like, oh God, this is a complete waste of time. Just nothing is following through. Just not enough people there uh, to take advantage. Ironically, after I logged off around lunchtime, that's when mRNA that I've been watching for two weeks really, really exploded. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about Friday session. Uh, Snow had a really, really big run this week. Uh, 310 uh, needs to build. Uh, Snow closed right over that 310 area. I still like it. I still think uh, you see higher prices. Again, the value on this thing is to buy it into rising support on any single weakness. Again, you can't remember the breakout on Snow was 292. It's not three, you know, it's not. 307, 310. This is just a continuation of an interval from down here. So when the stock has this big move, what you want to do is keep on buying into the rising 60 minute support until it starts losing the five day moving average. So again, uh, it closed above the 310 area. Um, I like it. I still like it going into um, this week. Uh, NET, beautiful move on NET. Uh, 130 uh, needs to build. Here was NET, right? Had a really nice move. Uh, nice move, relaxed for a couple of days. It took out 130, uh, went to like 131 and a half. And it, that was kind of my point. You, you really didn't see those four or $5 moves. And again, we'll get the mRNA in a second. Uh, but again, you did have some flow, but not enough to kind of really 
you know, kind of get a date going together. But again, it is what it is here. Uh, AFRM never, you know, never got to the, you know, never confirmed the hundred dollar area. It got there a couple of times. It just couldn't bust through. On uh, Nvidia, again, here's a perfect example. Just not enough participants. Usually. Uh, Nvidia 227 rejected two times after I left the stock went obviously nuts. Um, you know, it is what it is. I was watching this 227 level for three days and it just, you know, I bought it, went up like 30 cents and it came back down. Um, it just, it just sat there, did nothing. And I said to myself, man, if they pull the futures, this thing's going to get, it's heavy, right? It's heavy. I, I, I want to be more feasible. I want to be more, uh, more risk adverse just because, you know, I just, there is not enough participation and I wound up selling it and yada, yada, yada. The damn thing went to almost, uh, two thirty. but here's the good news. Here's the good news. Um, if there is good volume that comes back into this market and the video starts confirming this channel here, Hey, maybe this thing starts this next leg up. Uh, 236, 237. So let's keep an eye on NVIDIA. Uh, yeah, so here was mRNA, uh, 405 sneaky for experienced traders, 414 rejected twice, needs to build. Again, we talked about mRNA for like two weeks and I was already gone. For all you guys who caught it, who are still in it, congratulations. So here was uh, the 405, right? 405 stopped here, 405 stopped here. Here was the sneaky pivot. And it finally got over the 414 level and closed right at the highs of the day at 417. Obviously, any dip on this thing needs to be bought into rising 60 minute support. And if it confirms Friday's channel, I mean, look how much room you have, guys. So there's a lot of room there. Um, so if, we, if you're still long mRNA, congratulations. I think this thing looks great. Uh, edit never went in the red to green. Uh, net, again, take on the way up. Uh, I kind of like this BITF uh, for small cap lovers. Keep, guys, keep an eye on this thing. Again, it's up for me, but uh, they had some $12 short-term call buyers coming into this thing, BITF. It needed a, a 650 base. Uh, it just, it, it needs to close above the 650 area. If it does, you could get another run there. Uh, so keep an eye on that. And I believe that's it. So going into this week, obviously, um, I am still buy side bias. Obviously, anything can change on the drop of a dime. But again, you have your research, you have your opinion, you're not anticipating it, you're waiting for confirmation, you're looking for volume to come in. Obviously, if you could get some option flow, that'd be a huge benefit to what you're looking to do. And the most important part is stay patient, stay focused. You don't need to trade every single day. The break even trade is going to extend your life. And the most important part is, like we say in business, is staying in business. Guys, have a great remainder of your weekend. And with God's help, I'll see you next week. Take care.